The 10K distance for running is a milestone for many runners out there. And one of the most commonly targeted times for the 10K has to be the hour or less, the sub 60 minute 10K. And today in this video, I'm gonna be helping you to achieve that. Now typically 10k is the next distance up that many new runners will target following the 5k. Yeah, understandably, it can be quite daunting because it's quite a big step up. I mean, you have worked so hard to accomplish that 5k, yet this is twice the distance. So is it twice as hard? Well, actually, for many runners out there, running 10k can be more manageable than running that first 5k that you went for. I mean, once you can run 5k continuously, you have opened up the doors to so much more. You are someone that can sustain running for a continuous period of time. So that means just running an extra 5K on what you already have achieved isn't all that bad. So let's begin by looking at what we're trying to achieve here. Running 10K in less than 60 minutes requires a pace of at least nine minutes and 39 seconds per mile or six minutes per kilometer. That's obviously the same pace as running 5K in just under 30 minutes. And interestingly, many runners actually find that their pace doesn't drop off that much from 5K up to 10K, particularly for newer runners. So if you're someone that can already run 5K in around 30 minutes, then it's more than likely that you're already be knocking on the door of that sub 60 minute 10k perhaps currently around maybe, maybe 63 to 65 minutes so with a little bit of training that is definitely achievable but if you're not currently at that sort of fitness level then don't worry it's still very much achievable it may just need a little bit more prep time and training now talking of training one of the main differences between training for a 10k versus training for a 5k is the distance that you'll need to cover in some of your runs. Now running a sub 60 minute 10K is going to require you to prepare both physically and mentally. And there is no better way to doing that than by covering the 10K distance or close to that distance regularly and comfortably within your training. So actually a good way of doing this is by including one longer run into your training schedule per week. And by spending more time on your feet and running, this is going to help to improve your aerobic fitness towards that 10K and also your fatigue resistance. Now to be clear, this needs to be a nice, easy, sociable and aerobic pace, far, far slower than that, than when you're trying to go after that sub 60 10K. Make sure you build the duration and distance of this run up gradually. Don't suddenly jump in at 10K if you're not used to that. Increments of 10% are always a good idea. For instance, 5K to 5.5K to 6K to 6.7K to 7.3K and so on. You don't, however, need to run super long if you're simply training for 10K because anything too long could end up leaving you fatigued and not able to reap the benefits of some of those faster quality sessions that we'll get into in just a moment. So anything up to around 12 to 14K is absolutely fine. Initially, don't worry about the pace so much in these longer runs. Simply focus on the distance and just spending time on your feet. Some weeks you might want to focus on just covering the distance and then other weeks you might want to explore off-road, hillier, in which case you may just want to focus on the time and the time on your feet. Now it may or may not come as a surprise to you, but to run a 10K fast, it still requires us to do some speed sessions. This is all about improving our top end speed. Now that means running at paces faster than those required to simply run a sub 60 minute 10K. So faster than that 9.39 minute mile or six minute per K. This is all about increasing that ceiling to your pace range. And an ideal and perfect way of doing this is using intervals. Now these intervals are shorter durations allowing us to really focus on that top end speed for a short duration of time and then with good recovery between them. Now the length and the intensity of those intervals can vary. Ideally we want to do them on something like an athletics track which will simply allow us to just focus on getting the effort done and nothing else. But if you don't have ac access to an athletics track just a good smooth road or trail is fine. Anything where like I said you can focus on getting the effort done and not having to dodge pedestrians or the risk of rolling an ankle. 
Good examples of these include a simple 30 on, 30 off style workout. So after a good warm up, run hard for 30 seconds above your 10K target race pace, and then jog for 30 seconds, making sure that you keep moving. Keep repeating that through for a total of eight minutes, then take an extra three minute recovery before repeating that eight minutes on off format once more. Another example is a pyramid style workout where we increase the duration slightly. For the main workout, run hard for 30 seconds above your 10K target race pace, then into a recovery jog for an equal 30 second duration. Then one minute hard, one minute jog recovery, one minute 30 hard, one minute 30 jog recovery, then back to one minute hard, one minute jog recovery, 30 seconds hard, 30 seconds jog recovery, back up to one minute hard, one minute jog recovery, one minute 30 hard, one minute 30 jog recovery, one minute hard, one minute jog recovery, 30 seconds hard, 30 seconds jog recovery. You get the picture. And with time, you can add more pyramids to this workout. We also can't forget the tempo workout. This is a key workout for any runner, but for you guys, Focusing on the sub 60 minute 10K, this is incredibly important and here's why. See, the tempo pace is technically at or just a little slower than the best pace you can sustain for an hour all out which is obviously very close to the pace that you're looking to hit in your 10K. The idea is that this intensity correlates to your threshold, the point at which your body starts to produce lactic acid at such a rate that it's quicker than your body can remove it. That's obviously brushing over a bit of science there before the lactic acid police jump on my back. However, what this means is that by training at, or a little slower than this pace, at tempo, we can rack up some good time at a very good intensity intensity without dipping too far over and producing lactic acid. So as an example, if you're on the cusp of a sub 60 minute 10K, then it's likely that your tempo pace will be around six minutes per kilometer and slower and certainly not faster. Now, the idea with these tempo workouts is it's longer periods of time at this effort, which we can build up with time. So to begin with, four lots of five minutes at this tempo pace is a good starting point with three minutes jog recovery between each. You can even repeat this with less recovery with time too. You can then move on to eight, six, four, and two minutes at tempo with two minutes recovery jog between each. Then up to two lots of 10 minutes at tempo with two minutes jog recovery between each. And even maybe with time, three lots of 10 minutes at tempo with two minutes jog recovery between each. Now I'm aware I've given you a lot of info and a bunch of workouts there. So how do you use all of that and fit it into your training week? Well, ideally you'd look to fit one speed workout in, one tempo workout and one steady long run, along with maybe one or two other easy aerobic runs, depending on how many runs you're doing per week, all nicely spread out throughout the week. So for instance, say you're running four times per week, you might want to do the speed workout on the Monday, follow that with a nice easy aerobic recovery run on the Wednesday, your tempo run on the Friday, and then the steady long run over the weekend. Now, of course, that is just an example. Use that how you like, but as I've said, try and spread it out over the week and with your available time. Okay, so now let's talk about the actual 10K that you're targeting and planning to do. Now, some of you out there may be planning to do an actual organized 10 kilometer event, Others of you out there may be planning to do your own 10K organized solely by yourself in your own time, which is more than likely at the moment. Now, whatever your choice and whatever you're planning to do, it's important that you pay close attention to the actual course. So first off, the surface that you'll be running on. Now, if it's a soft ground, it's loose underfoot or even full of potholes and whatnot, that is not going to give you as quick a time as a nice, smooth and perfectly flat 10K course. Again, if it's lumpy and hilly, that's not going to give you as quick a time as a nice flat 10K course. And then of course, there's the weather. Now, you don't have total control over the weather, but if the course is on a very exposed and typically very windy section, then again, that is going to impact your time significantly. 
Personally, I always run fast with people around me. If you're organizing your own, then see if someone fancies joining you or even just pacing you on the bike perhaps. And as we're talking about pacing, you know that you need to run at a pace of at least nine minutes 39 per mile or six minutes per kilometer. However, it's so easy to get carried away in the opening stages. That's normal because adrenaline is high and you're feeling fresh. You want to use this adrenaline to a degree as it's like free energy energy but you want to keep a cap on the pace and for how long you exceed above it. So 10 to 15 seconds per kilometer quicker through the first half a kilometer or so is fine but you want to be dialing it back very quickly after that and settling into your pace. Now I would really recommend wearing a sports watch so that you can track your time and your pace during the 10K. Personally, I'd really recommend a GPS sports watch like this one so you can track that pace live on your watch as you're running. Failing that, a lot of 10K events will actually have mile markers and kilometer markers on the course. If they don't, then perhaps go out beforehand, so make a little mental note, or if you're organizing your own, do the same or perhaps even go as far as putting up some markers for yourself and then as you go through those markers then you can just check your time against those markers as you're going through. I actually used to go as far as actually writing the splits and the times down on my hand so that I wouldn't forget them. Um, now final bit of advice in terms of pacing with 2k to go you want to make a conscious effort to try and pick your pace up. Now in reality the likelihood is you don't actually pick your pace up you maybe at most just sustain the pace that you've been running at but that is what is needed particularly as you start to fatigue towards the end is what's needed to try and maintain that good pace that you've been running at and get the best time you possibly can okay a lot of advice there for you i hope you have enjoyed today's video if so please do give it a like give it a thumbs up don't forget to give us a follow over on social media we've got tons more videos like this and if you're targeting a faster 10k time we've got a video for you on that already so head on over to our channel and give us a subscribe just down below